College football big game previews week number four. That is correct. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six incredible sports books, Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and opening soon, that's right, Friday, September 28th at 11 o'clock in the morning. We got a date. The sports book at the Fitz. Yes, I, I'm going to try and be there, but that's next Friday, so I am uh, I am prepped for it. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. Let's go on and tell them about the website. Tell them about the picks contest. Look, we have had hundreds of people sign up for this contest. Every week is a, a little bit different prize, but it will be something from Tunica, Mississippi every week. Go to the website, winningcureseverything.com. We've got a little button up in the top right-hand corner whenever you go to the actual website. It says football picks or picks contest or something. I forget what it says. Look, Either just way. Just click around the website. Just click around, but it'll Give say like clicks. football picks contest. We're not trying to say you on real clickbait. Just it's free. Wander around. It's free to enter. Put in your email address. Tell us where you're from. Give us your Sign Twitter up. handle. Yeah, give us your Twitter handle, and then that's about it. And we're going to give you free nights down at the casinos. We'll give you free slot play. We'll give you free uh, free some buffets, dining. Some dining, yeah. Yeah, so like uh, this week, it is a two-night stay at Hollywood Casino and a $50 free slot play. Uh, last week, the winner was Michael C., and he got um, he got $100 to the steakhouse over at Hollywood and Damn. $50 free slot play. Week before that, it was uh, it was a free night at Fitz Casino and free slot play and, and whatever else. But go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. we got everything you need over there. Let's jump into some previews. Now, there's a few. There were like three really big games. Okay. And then there's uh, like. See, I, I, I disagree. I think that all five games are big. Uh, I think all five games are big. Which five are you talking about? The five we talked about before the show. Okay, the one, the cutting out one of them. Oh yeah, one of them is a garbage game. We don't even need to discuss <laughs> at all. All right, these lines are coming from. Uh, well, at first they came from MGM, but now these lines are coming from Gold Strike Casino down in Tunica. Um, and then every week we'll have a different one. But for this week, Gold Strike down in Tunica. First game, Stanford. Minus two at Oregon. The over-under is 55. 7 p.m. ABC, Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. This is the college game day game. Yep. So our, our buddy Bear is going to be out there. Chris Felica. It's like four in the morning when they get started. Yeah. No, local time. It is insane. I, I'll tell you this, though. I would love to be there for a game day just to be there early morning, watch the sun come up over the West Coast. Yeah, I mean, it's, Eugene's I, a pretty beautiful place. I've I've heard good things. My wife has been there. I haven't been to Oregon, yeah. uh, but she tells me it is a beautiful, we beautiful see part a of the country. Who goes up with one of those private planes? That's, I believe that. What what did he say? The <laughs> like flypersonal.com dot com, fly, right. whatever it is, wheelsup dot com. We're think. not there yet. We're not quite there, but we will be. Y'all keep watching these YouTubes. We'll get there. <laughs> KJ Costello and Bryce Love versus Justin Herbert. These are the big names on this. Oregon has not been tested at. All this season, but uh, they are dead even in turnover margin, and they are one and two against the spread. Stanford is two and one against the spread. They are plus four in turnover margin. Uh, Oregon's given up two hundred twenty six passing yards and seven point one passing yards per attempt uh, so far on the season. Costello should be able to take advantage of this. You would think the average Sagarin rating of the opponents that they have played. Stanford is not going to be good. 76. Okay, that's not so bad. It's not bad, right? USC. With San Diego State, USC, USC. They brought those up. And and UC Davis even really isn't that bad. Okay. okay. So, uh, well, Oregon. Oregon's going to be rough. Oregon's is real bad. 171 Ooh. on average. Hmm. Uh, Man, that's not good. The analytics say that Stanford should win this game 34-26. to 26. That would cover the spread. And the total points would be 60, so that would be over the 55. That is the guess. What do you say about this game? I like Oregon at home. I like game day being there. I think this is going to be a good, exciting, fun Betters game. Betters love Oregon. I know. They're just Love fun. Oregon. Now, listen, I know they played a high school team last week. Did you see the uniforms that they came out with last week? I didn't see the, the they uniforms. Were, they were black and, like, highlighter green. They called them... I forgot what it's called, like lightning green or mean green. It was glow-in-the-dark green. 
and it looked pretty awesome. insane. I was a fan, and uh, you know, and maybe I just saw it on. I didn't watch the game, obviously. I I was in Boston, um, <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I saw I saw it on just one of the websites that I follow on Facebook. They showed them out. I, I wonder if they'll be coming out with those uniforms this weekend because this is game day. Yeah, I mean, I I could see it. The game is at 7 p.m. Central Time. And you know how I like the black uniforms anyway. Yeah. I'm it, pretty partial to the black. I am curious if, because that game last week was, was a night game. Yep. This one starts at 5 p.m. local time. So I am curious if maybe, like, if it's really hot out there. It depends on, on what the temperature would be like. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to be hot. I think so, it'll be all right. I'm not worried about the weather. I don't know, man. I just I really like Oregon. I think they're a good team. I think they're fast. They're definitely young. Um, Stanford's more experienced. Stanford's a power team. They're gonna try to slow them down. They're gonna try to ugly up the game. They'll probably do pretty well at that. I don't know I, that this Stanford team has showed me anything. That maybe the team that they've beat are just not really good. I think that is very possible. Like I was impressed by the USC win. I was I was like, man. And then I saw Texas beat up <laughs> Just on you. beat the and mess they, out and of them last bad. week. And I don't think Texas is a good football team. No, I don't think they're that good. Uh, I, but no, I was impressed with the uh, the San Diego State win because San Diego State put the clamps down on Bryce Love, and they still beat them 31-10. to 10. Yeah, they found they found other ways to win. Yeah. But they're better than San Diego State. I mean, they just got the dudes to figure something out. Yes, I, I do agree with that. Uh, I don't know. I, I wonder if David Shaw's coaching experience – over Mario Cristobal will No, he definitely has a coaching experience. Yeah. But man, Cristobal's a good coach. And the game being at, at basically at night, at home, game day. You're right. This is going to be a tight game. Uh I am not certain on which way I'm going to lean yet. Analytics again say 34-26 Stanford. That yeah, is those, 60 those, total points. Guys, so that's the over. Those guys told me to bet Northwestern last week too. <laughs> and I don't like listening to analytics and I was just like uh, that's a pretty big difference. I don't think analytics can uh, can account for three turnovers Tw- returned for touchdowns. Twenty one points. Yeah, we mm. we won't get into it too bad uh, for our Westlock Pirate buddies, but uh, yeah, that was that was an ugly one. I wasn't happy. Ugly one last week. Uh, game number two, Wisconsin minus three and a half at Iowa. This is the game I'm most excited to watch. Uh, this one comes on at 7:30 p.m. on Fox, so it'll be on a little bit uh, staggered. Right? I, I will be, bit. I'll be watching more of this game than anything else. So I will. Uh, I will have both of these on yeah. at the same time, and whichever one is more entertaining. <laughs> well, no, the Stanford game will probably be more entertaining. Uh, that's my this guess. This one's going to be two big dudes in a phone booth beating each other up. Yeah. Uh, the over under is 41 and a half. 7.30 p.m. on Fox, Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. It would have been a much bigger game. There would be a lot more national attention on it had Wisconsin not blown last week's BYU game. That's why uh, I just disagree. The – should I tell you the – I think I think the fact that Wisconsin lost – Makes it that much bigger? It just makes it that much bigger. I, I really do. I think they're going to be pissed off. I think the they're national media – I think it will be bigger for Wisconsin – but I think as far as national media goes, because you hadn't had, oh, you hadn't well, heard yeah, a whole lot about you it. Because you don't get two yeah. undefeated teams. No, I, I get that completely. Um, I'll tell you the analytics here. Yeah. Iowa is 3-0 and against the spread this year. They are giving up only eight points per game. God, that's nothing. Wisconsin man. is 0-3 against the spread. They're giving up 13.7 points per game. Um. Iowa's defense is only giving up 42 rushing yards per game. That's 1.5 yards per carry, while Wisconsin is averaging 285 rushing that, yards per that game. Will, that will change this weekend, yes. Iowa. Yes. That will change this weekend. I, I think both of them have ability oh. to change, right? Oh, no, no, no. Definitely. Wisconsin ain't putting up 300 yards on the ground or not. They might. That would I surprise that. me. I doubt It would that. surprise me. Um, but I also don't think that Iowa's going to keep Wisconsin to 42. Like, I really don't think that's oh, going to change. Oh, God, no. Um, no, Wisconsin's hitting triple digits. I mean, l- listen at the yards per carry difference. It's 6.1 yards per carry for Wisconsin, 1.5 that Iowa's defense is giving This up. is like the immovable man versus the unstoppable object. Yes. Like, this is it. We all know Kinnick Stadium at night yes. is oh, bananas. Kurt right? Ferentz, 
this is such this is such a good matchup. And if you're a Iowa, fat guy and you like offensive line play, oh, this defensive is, line play, this is this, heaven. This is gonna be a great game. I wish I could go to this game. This is like the game that I want to be at one day. Oh, it's Iowa, Iowa is uh, Iowa is waiting for this one. I, I yeah. talked to you about this. They lost last year. They thought they had a shot against Wisconsin, and Wisconsin kind of rubbed their face in a little bit. Thirty-eight to fourteen last year, and Iowa lost at home to Wisconsin, seventeen to nine in two thousand sixteen. Yeah. They they view themselves as equals to Wisconsin. Oh, they should. They should. And I mean, they're not that. Wisconsin's a better program, I think, nationwide. Everybody assuming that. But they're not that much better. They're not so good that you just chalk this W up to Wisconsin. It was just 2015 that Iowa was undefeated going into the Big Ten championship game. That's right. Um, You know, the analytics say, and I'm going to do this for every game just so you've got an idea if you want to lean one way or another, it says Iowa 22-21 to and over the 41.5. So that's 22-21 is 43 points. You're going over by a point and a half. No, this is good. I think this game is going to be incredibly close. I will be not. I won't be touching this game at all with a betting line. <laughs> that is rare for me to be locked in on a game and not not me, be super interested and not in have you. any gambling action on it. I, I just want to watch this football game so bad. Well, I'm because waiting. there's there's no telling what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Like, there, you just any wrong move will win or lose the ball game. I've got a list of games that I I finally started getting out of my element a little bit and going to games, getting out of the house, and now I've got this bug, and so now I've got a list of games and places to go. Uh, Madison and uh, Camp Randall are on my list. Okay. Well, you're talking about Iowa City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kinnick State. Was, yeah, Kinnick State. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's jump on to number three. Uh, TCU, minus two and a half. At Texas. Over under is fifty one, three thirty p.m. on Fox in Austin, Texas. Fox has got all the best games this weekend. They really they they've I mean, had they're, they're going to dominate the TV. They they really between actual good matchups mm-hmm. like yes, and I, they are probably going to do this all year. Yeah, all year. Uh, both teams are two and one. They've got losses to Big Ten teams, but TCU looks a little bit better oh, because uh, losing, Ohio State losing to Ohio State and staying with them. All game until the very end looks completely different than uh, than getting your doors blown off by Maryland in the first game of the season. Uh, It's got smoked by Temple. As far as yards per play goes, TCU has the advantage. They uh, they average six point three five yards per play to Texas is five point five three, and on defense, uh, TCU gives up four point six seven. Texas gives up five point one eight. Texas has played the number 43 schedule in the country to TCU's only number 79. That's based on Sagarin ratings. Texas's defense last week gave up negative five rushing yards to USC. That is absurd. That was on 16 carries. Yeah, I was about to say, USC got away from the run pretty quick. Well, which is crazy because they were up 14-3. to three. Like, it, well, they, and, they didn't have to get away from well, it. Well, and here's the other thing. College football does something different than the pro football all sack yardage goes against rushing yards. Yes. In the pros, sack yardage goes against your passing yards. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah, uh Ben Roethlisberger started the game off negative five yards after the first two drives of passing. That's insane. But but it, but he <laughs> wasn't he wasn't he just got sacked a couple of times and so that's how he Yeah, so started. counted against it. Okay. Uh T C U could have beaten Ohio State if they did not turn the ball over three times. They T- were they were in that game. Yeah, they're not evenly matched. I'm not saying that, but they're not a whole lot worse than Ohio State. They're the next tier down. Yeah, next tier down. Uh, TCU is negative one on the season as far as turnover margin goes. Texas is negative two on the season. So a little even there. The analytics say TCU twenty eight to twenty six. That gives us the over of fifty one. Man, that's a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, it's. I'll be riding Gary Patterson until the day and that's I die. that's totally totally cool because analytics did say that Northwestern would beat up on Akron, so <laughs> that's right. That's I mean, right. You, you never know with these things, right? Like it's it's just what a, a computer says right. should happen, and I've got like five computers putting you, together. If you, if you give me Tom Herman and Gary Patterson, that is a no brainer. I'm taking that. I'll tell you every this: day of my life. if Texas wins this game. I am going to feel much better about that 
stupid eleven and one pick. That's all right. That yeah. I had early in the no, year. No, that's okay. Yeah, no, you and you should. You absolutely should. Here's the thing: they've got talent. Herman's supposed to be a really good coach. Todd Orlando is. He's got a. He's a good defensive mind. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong. With, he's probably not the top three or four coordinator in the country, but he's a really good defensive coordinator. Very capable guy. Like, there's no reason for them to have the record they have under Herman. On top of that, Tom Herman, as a a short underdog, it, he's like seven and zero against the spread. It's ridiculous. So, like, the I, fact that they're two and a half okay. point underdogs at home. I know that we talked about this last we'll, week. We'll get into this when we get into the picks. Okay. That's fine. Okay, we can do that. You can. I got you. All right, we're going to skip this. We're not going to talk we're about We're not talking about that one. We're not you talking about Georgia Missouri. Don't, you, don't, you don't even say it. See? That's, you don't even say it. <laughs> that'll be an honorable mention. It's not an honorable mention. It, it, Missouri it's is not mentionable. Next one up, Texas A&M at Alabama. Alabama this is a legit game. <laughs> Alabama minus 27 and a half. So here's, here's the deal. I, I, have, I have fought you every week trying to talk about Alabama. I have I have absolutely put the screws <laughs> to you because what do we always say? I picked this up from 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 Cowherd. We have stolen it. We've taken it for our own. Be great, be terrible, just be entertaining. At at no point in time have any of the games that you your team has played been entertaining at all. You beat up on lesser people than you. And while that's fine and that's good and there's nothing wrong with that, it's nothing to talk about. There are three games this year we get to talk about Alabama. This is one of them. Discuss. This is one, apparently, the LSU game and the Auburn game. Well, yeah, that's, other ones. that's it. That's the list. You want to put somebody else on the list? Because it's no. garbage. No. Because you're going to beat them all by 80. You might beat A&M by 80. But at That's, least I found A&M it funny that Georgia proven. at Missouri and and Georgia is a fourteen and a half point favorite. You don't want to talk about that. That's Vegas. I don't but, care about Vegas. I'm letting you talk about your team. Take the floor. You've I, got I the don't floor. Care. I'm not worried about my team. But you should. This is a great game. No, I, it is a great game. I, I think this. It's I think, why it's on the list. I think that if people think that this is just going to be a boring Alabama smash game, either one of two things is happening. Y'all are immeasurably better than Clemson. Or A&M just has a really bad off night. Or A&M... Because A&M had Clemson beat. A&M got to play Clemson at home in a crazy atmosphere. And now they have to go play Alabama at 2.30 on a Saturday. Like, it's just a, it's a whole different world, right? Like, okay. in, in one, you got 100,000 people behind you. In another one, you got 100,000 people against you. You know, okay. young teams can do a whole lot of different stuff. Uh, I'm not saying that Alabama will kill Texas A&M. I fully expect Jimbo Fisher to be to, to be ready for this. Way better coach than anybody else yeah. in, in the Missouri game that we're dealing with here. Yeah, I do agree with that part. And I do agree in the Ole Miss game from last week. I, the Georgia thing does scare me a little bit. It, it, it shouldn't. It, we'll we'll get just, to that. We'll, just, we'll do an honorable mention on that. We don't need to. Uh, to a, <laughs> you were throwing me way off my game. A&M is averaging 44.3 points per game, 7.45 yards per play. They are giving up, however, 6.18 yards per play. So the defense thing has not quite been figured out with Mike Elko. I still think he is a genius. I think it's taking a little while uh, to round that thing into shape. Right? they got to get some talent. Yeah. Uh, Alabama, 56.7 points per game, 7.67 yards per play. They are giving up 4.4 yards per play. Big difference on that part. Kellen Mond threw for 430 yards and three touchdowns against Clemson. He has seven touchdowns and zero interceptions on the season. A and M's. Uh, it, this is their first game on the road. If if he can be not let the crowd get to him and just be in control of his emotions in the game, the way he was against Clemson, Alabama's defense is good. I don't know that they're that much better than Clemson's. If he can play the same level of football that he played against Clemson, A and M will be in this game. This is Jimbo's first shot at Saban inside the SEC, um, including national championship. Uh, Saban assistants are zero and twelve uh, uh, while he's been at Alabama. Or no, I guess that's all time. Isn't it? I don't know. Uh, analytics say Alabama should win this one, forty-four to seventeen. That is sixty-one points. That would be the under. 
because the over under is sixty one and a half. Uh, I didn't say this before. Uh, Alabama minus twenty seven and a half. Two thirty p.m. CBS Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. The line opened up at twenty four. It was bet to minus twenty seven and a half in less than twenty four hours. What say you? How do you feel about this? I will be taking Jimbo Fisher and the Fighting Aggies. I think they are a they're getting no respect in this. I know that Alabama has crushed teams. I get that. I don't know that Alabama is going to play better at home than they are on the road. I think they are an incredibly consistent team. Yes. I don't think having the crowd behind them will make them a better football team because I think they're playing at optimal efficiency. With that being said, that defense is really good. They have shut down a bunch of garbage football teams. The three teams that they have played wouldn't finish in the top half of all colleges nationwide. They just wouldn't. Ole Miss is not a top 60 team. They're just not. Louisville, definitely not a top 60 team. They're not even a favorite to win this weekend. They're a dog against Virginia. Is that true? I think they're a favorite. No, they're plus five. Oh, you're right. Yep. Plus four and a half right here, according to Gold Strike. So, Uh, that, that... I'm I'm just I'm just saying A and M is a class far above those teams. Will Alabama still roll? Probably, but twenty seven and it's going up. Yeah, twenty seven seems like that's a that's just too much. Ole Miss was only like a twenty one point favorite. That this is just ridiculous. Yeah. That one was on the road and you know, this one's at home, but I, I don't think it really matters that much. Um uh, yeah, analytics say Alabama would cover the twenty seven. Um, oh, no, no, no. That's right at 27 that's right points. right at 27. I was about so, to say, they're, they're, it's, it's right at both Yeah, numbers. that'd be under. That'd be under. Um, let's go on with the honorable mentions. Oh, no, no. Oh, the, other, the other big game that you uh, – Florida at Tennessee. Florida at Tennessee is a big game. You neither know, one of these teams are great. Neither one of these teams are even good right now. But this is a, this is a game – if we're going to cover SEC football, this game matters in the SEC. Yeah. It has yeah, you're forever. Right. You're right. And these teams, I think, are more even this year than they've ever been. They've would been you agree with time. that? I, I would agree with it that. It doesn't mean they're both good. They're just – but Florida has come down to Tennessee's level a lot, and Tennessee has come up a little bit. Tennessee does look a lot better coached than than they did before, right? Yeah. So it, it, give me give me your thoughts on this. I don't have notes on it. <laughs> I don't. Uh, this look, was don't, in one of my honorable yeah, mentions. But I don't. I don't do the analytical breakdown. I don't look the Massey body or the, the, the Massey P body ratings. I don't, you don't use Massey P body. You use just a Massey, right? right. Um, and you use like three other ratings on it. And all this stuff. I've watched these two teams play a lot. I've watched a lot of Dan Mullins over the last couple of years. <laughs> I think Dan's a good coach. I cannot figure out for the life of me why Florida can't consistently win. Uh, well, I would I would think I mean, a lot of that would be since, Felipe Franks. Ever since Urban Meyer and, has left there, but I'm just I'm talking about I'm talking about like a long time running. Well, it's it, since uh, Urban easy. has left, it's been play calling and not developing play. players on offense. It's not just quarterback, but that has a lot to do with it. If the quarterback cannot get the ball to the to the playmakers, so you know my philosophy on Florida State, right? And how just there's like. It's there's a cultural this, thing. There's this culture of of just these players aren't tough. They're not disciplined. They they just they go out there and they just try to play for themselves. Nobody's really playing. I think Florida's got a lot of that, and I don't know that Dan can fix that. Remember, Dan didn't come in and clean Mississippi State up. Croom came in in three and years and cleaned it up, and, and then and he was he was a disaster win loss, but he cleaned that yeah. program up. It was a cesspool when Jackie Sherrill left. Yeah, it was it was completely. And then Dan got to take over a program that was ready to roll, and now he's in the cesspool stage. I don't know that he's the guy to clean up a program. What is the line on this uh, on this Florida game? Four and a half. Tennessee plus four and a half. Tennessee plus four. They're and at half. home and they're catching points. Yep, four and a half. You are dead on it. Um, I wouldn't lie to you now. And I do appreciate that. I really I, do. I might be wrong on something, but it I wouldn't think, be intentional. I think I'd probably take Tennessee here. I'm taking Tennessee. I think at, at home, I think they're fired up for this one. I think the talent gap is uh, is not as far as it has been. Nope. And, and I'll uh, tell you this. I, we've got a real small sample size 
Well, in every in every year, recruit. it's been one possession, right? It's, it's always last been a year close was game. a last second throw. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd I'd probably take. Tennessee. I think this is the one game Tennessee fans think we can win this game. Yeah, in the in the East, I think Georgia. They all know they're not winning. I think they probably all would tell you they think they can beat South Carolina. I don't know that they can. Vanderbilt's pretty good. Kentucky's got some big wins. Missouri's looking a lot better than most people. I think the team that they are going to circle and say, we have to win this game to make our season even come close to successful, this is their Super Bowl. This is the kitchen sink game for them. I don't think it's that for Florida. I, you know, I think I agree with you. I do think I agree with you. I'm, I'm really actually kind of excited about this game. <laughs> I, it's kind of sad that this game has fallen to the place that it is in the world because it used to be the marquee SEC yeah. game. And I now mean, it's, This uh, was the 230 game no matter – even when Tennessee was bad, this was still the 230 and, game. And now this has become the Saturday night – SEC network. Yeah. <laughs> Very few people getting it. I, look, I'm not going to lie. I literally thought that – like I, I just didn't even think about this game when it came to the big game. Mention all I, that. I, 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 I thought it was a good game. I thought not only was it a good game, I think it needs to be in one of the big games. These, okay. these are two big boy programs that have just fallen. Yeah, and and, it, and, and that, that, that kind of makes it interesting. Yeah, it. Well, now that they're both kind of same, same level, all that. Yeah. Um, let's go on through some of the honorable mention while we, uh, while we have a little bit of time. Friday night, Florida Atlantic at UCF. Cannot wait for this game. Lane Kiffin against Josh Heupel. This game is going to be so great. It, I really need Florida Atlantic to score and not make this a disaster just just to entertain me on a Friday night. Well, the, hey, look, we'll move to another Friday night game. Washington State at USC. Oh, I know. Also Friday night. So you got two games. You got one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. Uh, I think that Kiffin can probably keep – you know, I don't. I don't think that UCF's defense is just otherworldly right now. That offense is though. That offense really is. <laughs> uh, the is analytics say that game will be forty-four to twenty-seven. Uh, so it, I don't know what the over/under is on that one, but uh, this one says it'll hit seventy-one points. That's a lot of points. That is a lot of points. USC and Washington State. USC coming off two ugly losses, getting to come back home, but they're coming home on a short week. Uh, the analytics say USC thirty to twenty seven for a total of fifty seven. So, uh, let's jump into some Saturday games. We'll roll through these pretty quick. Georgia minus fourteen and a half at Missouri. It'll be a uh, fifty point game. That's I kind of I kind of think that uh, if Missouri can can throw the football on them, which I don't think they can, then it could be interesting. But I, I doubt that it is. That's an eleven a.m. game in Memorial Stadium in Columbia. Notre Dame at Wake Forest. Notre Dame is a uh, what seven and a half point favorite now. Yes. So it's, seven and a half. Over, it opens over eight. seven. It might. Ooh, it might be eight. It, if it is, that's it's still bonkers. Uh, analytics say it should be thirty-one to twenty-seven. South Carolina at Vanderbilt. The only reason I have this in there is because Vandy looked pretty good at Notre Dame last week. This deserves to be in the honorable mentions. Neither yeah. one of these teams are the Florida level ready, but I think they have both kind of just done the same thing at Tennessee and Florida. Yeah. South Carolina, not as great as we thought. Vanderbilt, not right. nearly as bad as we thought. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and the last two games, Mississippi State at Kentucky. State is a 10-point favorite, according to Gold Strike on here. Uh, analytics say State 33-23, to 23. <laughs> so it says they should win by 10. Uh, that's going to be an interesting game. That's two undefeated teams that both have really high hope right now. The fact that Kentucky gets State at home, I think, gives them a better shot. But I'm telling you, that State defense is fierce. Like they are something else right now. Their front seven is crazy. Yeah, it's it's really really good. If State doesn't win this one by double digits, I might be a little surprised. Like if Kentucky gets a late touchdown, whatever. But I could see State up by you know thirteen and and uh, give up a late touchdown yeah. at the end of the game. That's that's kind of what I was thinking. Or up by two touchdowns, give yeah. up a touchdown, whatever. Uh, and then last game, late night, Pac twelve after dark, Arizona State. At Washington, Washington is what like an eighteen point favorite. So that was seventeen and a half according to Gold Strike. That just seemed like a whole lot of points to me. Now the analytics say it's it's pretty close. It's uh, thirty seven to twenty 
according to all the averages. But, man, that just seems like a lot of points. I feel like Arizona State got beat by San Diego State last week because they thought they could just walk in and win because they, they might have been prepping for, for Washington. So I don't know, man. I bet against Washington last week thinking they weren't world beaters. I think the class difference of them and everybody else in the Pac-12 is pretty different. Yeah, you might I, be I'll right. tell you this. The difference between Alabama and Georgia and most everybody else in the SEC might be the difference between Washington and everybody in the Pac-12. Well, like I don't know I, about that. It might not be that big, but you know what I'm saying? Remember, like, Arizona State is the team that, that beat Washington last year. Oh, well, yeah. Beat them 13-7. to seven. Last year? At Arizona State, yeah, but and this one a, is. I mean, this is this is it. This is in Seattle. Yeah, I mean, it's just different. And Chris Peterson is just an unbelievable coach. Now, eighteen points—that's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. But that's okay. We have given you all the information that you need to be a winner. Now, head over to Tunica, uh, get some action down on your favorite plays. As always, visit tunicatravel dot com for more information. You can also visit winningcureseverything.com to get all of our picks and to join the picks contest. Just go hit that football picks contest button, sign up there. We will give you some gambling picks in the next segment. 